in despair at the bridge what a fair there's all kinds of things gold and silvery rings and men who will put out your fire hot savory treats old splintery seats and drinks that'll quench your desire you can walk if you dare where the smoke fills the air and the man is up high on the wire there's antiques for sale throw balls in the pail painters and plumbers for hire here we go again oh what a wonderful smell you can find it all there with bark and despair at the bridge what a fair there's all kinds of cows and bullocks and sows and things that come from the farm Plenty of fun, you can sit in the sun And look at the lumberjack's arms There's been heartache and tears for the past fifty years But the town carries on the tradition Of building the tents and collecting the rents For the firemen's devotion here we go again Oh, what a wonderful smell You can find it all there With parking to spare At the bridge water fair Oh, here we go again Oh, what a wonderful smell Find it all there with park and despair at the bridge water fair at the bridge water fair at the bridge water fair. Well, I'm the refreshment man. I make sure that everyone's well satiated while setting up for the fair. A very important post. Of course, I couldn't do it without my waitress, Anne Marie. I serve the beverages, and I open them for everyone. And she's tipped well for every single one. You never ended up with skin cancer, I know. You always had purple shoulders. Well, not just one, but many. We like to keep the boys entertained, so we figure that variety is the spice of life and try to alternate our waitresses from evening to evening. This way, the boys don't get bored and there's always a new face in the crowd. Well, tomorrow evening will be the fair and uh, setup time will be over, so my post ends uh, tonight, Thursday night. But it begins again on It'll Monday. It'll begin again on Monday once we start uh, cleaning up. That's when morale's low, so we got to really do our best to boost spirits. That's when it's most important that I open the beverages, because they're all tired. It uh, used to start up around mid-July, but we've gotten so efficient now that uh, everything's down to a science, and we can get things done uh, in a lot less time. So we start usually around uh, the 1st of August, and continue right through until the third weekend. We're running like a jackrabbit. Well, only the week before the fair. Before that, it's all solo. See, you can't like pull out everything at once. You gotta kind of build up this slow. But he schedules us very early in the year because it's a it's it's a high profile job. Oh yeah, you gotta stand in line to get this job. You do, and you have to perform. If you don't perform, then you're not asked back. Just the other night, tell them what happened. What did happen? With the ladder. Oh, that's right. Well, we had a new girl on shift, and as uh, fate would have it, they were putting up the uh, the old siren, which had just gotten fixed. So everybody was up on the roof, and there was a ladder. And I told my new waitress, well, if you want to make a real good impression on the boys, climb up the ladder with a full tray. And so she went up there with sodas and waters. And full tray? On to the roof. was very, very satiated and happy. Oh, my God. No, it was not me. It was Miss Anto. Timing is everything. 
she set the standard for all waitresses this year. I guess. But I'll tell her tomorrow how much I made in tips tonight. <laughs> My shirt is obviously cut lower than hers was. That was all Anne's idea. <laughs> Well, only that this is probably the most enjoyable job for the entire setup of the fair. Because and people are always really happy to see you come and they're sad to see you go. Wrapped the orange things around all the ropes so no one hurts themselves on it. It's good. You clean the fire trucks. Yeah, we wash the fire trucks. All of them. Yeah, that's all we did. That's all we did. <laughs> we, uh, yeah. Yesterday we set up St. Mark's tent. Yeah. We set up uh, snow fencing. We did a lot of that. <laughs> that's pretty much all we do during the fact. Yeah, we eat. We eat. Of, eating's fun. That's one of the benefits of working, get lots of free food. You just go on rides and you just eat. You can do whatever you want to do. That's pretty yeah, much yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That summarizes it pretty good. Down, There's yeah. everything. And do you even know that the Bridgewater Fair is going to be tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Friday. It's tomorrow Friday? Yeah. Yep. It's tomorrow. I was working. I've marched the parade. I was working. Ooh. Yeah. I, I was working in the food Tomorrow tent. I'm working in the chicken tent. Um, so. And I have the um, I serving to call. I was cleaning, so I had so to much I, fun. I do the cleaning job. I have to park calls and for all of that. Tomorrow at the Bridgewater park Fair, guess what that. I'm doing? What? Working in the pizza tent. What are you doing in the pizza tent? Um, I'm going to put the rolls on the plate. Good job. And probably Cooler we will come and get them. Uh-huh. You know, tomorrow we're going to start cooking, probably. The fair doesn't open until 4 o'clock, and uh, we're going to start cooking chickens. I think it takes like uh, 45 minutes, hour? Two hours. <laughs> Two hours to completely cook a chicken, all right? And tomorrow we'll be running around here, you know, there'll be a crew here that's going to be on these tables, there'll be a crew racking, there'll be a crew that's going to be taking them out to the racks. It's a uh, sauce that we put on, we spray on, which is vinegar, butter, and water. And that just keeps them uh, moist. And then we take them off, we unrack them over here on this table, and uh, we serve them to the public. Uh, that's going to be going on for the whole weekend. We go through, and this is just the, just some numbers that I'm remembering. Is it could it could it possibly be 3,500 chickens on a big weekend? 3,500 chickens on a big weekend, which is uh, they cut in half. Uh, they cut the chicken in half and barbecue and serve a whole half, and that would uh, come out to 7,000 halves or 7,000 orders. John and I are, are hardcore chicken cookers, <laughs> all right, from way back. I don't know how many years. I, I think it goes back 20 years that I've been doing this. We were over on the other side of the uh, fairgrounds for the first 10, and, and we used to do it with uh, charcoal. Now we've streamlined it to gas, and it's a more even heat. We like it better. Chickens don't actually come out a little bit better. Um, they are just, you see, this is your second year? Running the tent. Running the tent. So these guys are in charge of the tent because they are firemen. John and I are not firemen. We just are workers at the tent. <laughs> these guys have all the responsibility if anything goes wrong. It's their fault. It's these guys. So. <laughs> but they do all the work. We, don't, we still know what we're doing. So, so we, also, we also cook corn in these cookers. If you come by you know, during the weekend, you will see you know, these are going. It's a pretty heavy duty job here. You need to be in good shape to work that to, uh, <laughs> to work the corn cooking. Uh, it's kind of dangerous too, right? It's not yeah. steam. You know, it's yeah. hot. It's, it's, it's hot. It's heavy. Hot and heavy. Best corn that you ever tasted in your life, though. <laughs> Best corn you ever had in your life. 
And good baked potatoes. Yeah, we're actually we're probably the smallest tent in terms of workers. So all of our workers work the entire weekend. Kind of lucky that way. We've been selling Hopefully out, we do well. Last last year we were pretty good. Last year I think yeah. we just about sold out. It's kind of a every year's. How many should we cook tonight? How many should we cook on Friday? When should we stop cooking Saturday? When should we stop cooking Sunday? And it's the storm coming. Yeah. Know. And so it's every year.
Okay, well the first thing is, I hope you have your coffee while you're watching this, because this is not going to be, um, it's not like watching NFL or uh, even fireworks on TV for that matter. Uh, join the gate, especially this gate, this is gate 4, as you can see, um, you have a clear view of us, there's nobody in front of us buying tickets, because gate 4 is, is, I think we call it the cushy gate? Exactly, the I think perk this is gate. the <laughs> And it's because the we're so gate. well connected that we get this gate, take it easy and enjoy the sunshine in the morning. Beautiful, uh, beautiful summer day here. Family time, we got. Yeah, there's the family. <laughs> exactly. In fact, you can uh, talk to my wife, who uh, you know had to rouse me to get me here in the morning. There's no actual uh, kind of physical preparation need for this. You get a uh, a letter in the mail that gives you your uh, your passes, your meal ticket, and your uh, uh, your parking, your special parking pass. And a little map as to where Gate Four is, and that's when I, when I saw it was Gate Four, that's when I knew I was in Lake Flynn. Exactly. Because hey. basically, it's just catching up with my friend Patrick here. Exactly. It's been, it's been a lot of good face time with Alan. It's uh, all for a good cause, yeah. and it's, uh, it's been a, uh, yeah, a a quiet morning here. Yeah. Now right? yeah, the music yeah. that you hear now is the um, <laughs> is the motocross uh, demonstration, the jumps demonstration. They're just about to start. Yeah. The things that we're picking up. Uh, yeah. You get a good view of that from Gate Four too. <laughs> Yeah. And that is the, that's the story of Gate 4, I think. Right. So next year, sign up. Sign Ask up. for Gate 4. <laughs> but not at 10 o'clock, if that's our shit. <laughs> Ma'am? No. Take my hat back to the car so oh, okay. I can see him to come back. He's going to do number two on her hand. <laughs> Give us a song to sing, sweet Jesus. Tell us the words you hear that may be kind. And make it as long as the day's work before us. And tell me the tune to teach the people just in time. You'll never know how hard I've tried to find you. I've traveled here, but I ended up out there. Devil has tried to sing the song of evil, but he'll never know the kind of music people share. Day begins, the fields are filling, workers out to do their share. Song begins, we all are willing. Let me hear his children everywhere. have gone, oh Jesus, take me over, and let me come home to sing the song again. It's 
in keeping my heart from the pain of growing older and making me feel like a life with you will never end. The day begins, the fields are filled, and workers out to do their share. The song begins, we all are willing. Let me hear his children everywhere. Yep, I am competing. I guess pretty much the whole barn. Yeah. Um, I show Jersey cows. It's a breed of cows, and I will be competing tomorrow for a breed class. So it'll just be against Jerseys. But then on Sunday, I'm going to be going in showmanship class, which is a class that you're trying to compete and see who's the better showman. And that's the hardest one because there's so many different details you have to have. Otherwise, you can't win the class. That gets a little hard. Yeah, we are. Uh, you have to wash the cow, make sure the cow is clean, check the ears, clip, all that stuff. But you also have to use your showman. You have to make sure you have the feet right. You have to talk, be able to talk to the judge. You have to be able to do all the little things that make the cow look better. Okay. Um, the smallest one is, her name is Ginny May. She's my little baby. She's my bread and own cow. Her mom is actually on the end. That's gingerbread. And then in between, there's Faith. Foxy, Tipsy, and Flip Flop. Yes, we have raised them from babies. Um, we put in a lot of time and effort with them. They get spoiled rotten, <laughs> completely rotten. And it's a lot of fun because you get to see them grow and grow and grow and grow and soon they're bigger than you are sometimes. Which can be a little scary, but. One of my older brother's cows got spoiled to the point where she would eat Oreo sipped in milk um, I have cows who will eat my breakfast out of my hands if I let them, which is why we're not supposed to eat near our cows anymore. <laughs> but the cows pretty much become like your dog. I have a cow who I can drop her off and she'll just follow me around. They get spoiled rotten and they're such fun pets. It's amazing. 4-H is a program where you're pretty much learning to be a better person, to be a better part of society. And just working with your animals helps promote that. I've been in 4-H since forever. <laughs> my mom's my 4-H leader, was before I was born. We've been doing this a really long time with 4-H. Uh, last week in my last show, my big cow at the end, Ginger Red, decided that she wasn't going to lead for me very well. And I almost got my foot broken. <laughs> At one point someone retired and I heard the needlework tent was open for grabs, so I decided, yeah, I think I'll do that. And, and my friend Monsi along with it. And my you? friend Monsi would probably want to help me. So I decided just to take it over. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably every year we get about um, in the senior division, which is over 16, 16 and over, we get probably about a hundred and 20 people that enter entries actually 120 entries articles that are actually entered and usually in the junior division we get about 40 and a lot of a lot of quilts right what do you yeah. think the majority of stuff is a lot of quilts and what else crocheted we usually are on the on that side of the tent and this year we're in the center which is our second year in the center of this big tent and as soon as you walk in you see us Right? There we are. Yep. There Front we are. Right. Yeah. We can well the judges come on the judges come on Friday morning to judge. By Six. the time the fair opens everything's been judged and displayed and ready for mm -hmm. everybody to, to view. First um, place is five dollars. We're up to five dollars. Five dollars yep. first place <laughs> each category. Five dollars, yep. Just for first place and uh, no no other prize, just ribbon. We have one <laughs> <laughs> one best to show in the seniors and one best to show in the juniors.
and that you get a pewter, a Woodbury pewter cup. As long as you live here, you're working here. Is that oh, how that works? Jeez. Unless you have some other job here that you'd rather do. Let's get this on tape. Well, I really, I <laughs> have my eye on the uh, fruits and vegetables. years and years before that by other women 
and all the women ship in and work here and sell t-shirts and mugs. It's going pretty well. It's been a nice, a nice crowd of people this year. And last year was great. The weather is perfect this year. So the food, I think, is doing very well this year. I came here to town 20 years ago. And they said, oh, wait till you see the big fair that we have. And I said, no, they could it be with 1,600 people or so. You know, when I walked in, I started to cry. And I said, oh my gosh, this is a Pollyanna. <laughs> this is the best. I've been doing this for, since the start of the raffle. The raffle is something that was designed to be a, a, a backup in a bad year, you know? You have a weak year, you have a, you have a raffle, and you, the raffle makes it, and, and it's work, which will draw well. But that, it's all weather dependent, that's the trouble with fairs, they're weather dependent. But this fair is going from a little carnival to a, a little country fair, we just had two tents here. All of this. It's amazing. People come in here and ask where, the, where this is, where that is. They want to know where the tractor uh, pulled It's always been here. Well, we've enjoyed it. A lot of work. There's a lot of work for a lot of people. I think all the guys that work here put them all together, add up their time and labor. It's probably 25 cents an hour. <laughs> That's about what they're making. <laughs>